A lot of times when we're working with thread certs or riv nuts, they'll sit slightly proud. Just like that. I have a case coming up with a job that I need to do where I can't have a gap like that. What I need to do is set it flush like this one. Flush or just under. And the way I did that is by making this tool, this little dimpling die. And it sets a dimple so that we can put a thread cert in flush. So let's go through the steps that I use to design and make this little dimple die. I have a bunch of these uh, thread certs or riv nuts that I have to set. And the part that I'm doing, they kind of need to be, the top of the, the insert needs to be flush or slightly countersunk on the part. So let's make a countersink tool in order to set these parts properly. Um, I start out by taking all my dimensions. My material thickness is a known dimension. The diameter of the uh, thread cert is a known dimension. The hole that the thread cert must go in is a known dimension. Um, and the amount of offset, minimum offset I need to make it flush is a known dimension. Um, so the hole, when you're drawing it through the tool, the path of least resistance is what the material is going to take. And it may just pull material from here instead of stretching from here. So we want to keep that uh, slightly undersized because the size of that might grow. So we're going to drop down to a 5 16 center bore and we'll use that as our alignment bolt and the ability to draw it together. Um, the next dimension we're going to change is we're going to go with 9 16 as the inside for the thread cert and in order to compensate for material thicknesses, we added two material thicknesses to count for that wall and that wall. And we end up with this dimension. So this dimension will be our female side. This dimension will be our male side. And uh, that's the beginning of the layout and design for this countersink tool. Um, I've already uh, located center and center punched my uh, piece of material and we'll begin the boring operation here in a minute but that's what we're going to do we're going to make a, a dimple die for thread search here I'm just giving a starting point for the drill bit using a center um, using plenty of oil everything looks like it's lining up well and it, it just gives it a point for the drill bit to go Here I've got the 5 16 drill bit. I maybe should have started with a smaller and then did a final operation, but it all worked out in the end. Once again, make sure you clear the drill bit and use plenty of oil. Just using a countersink just to give it a little chamfer at the edge of the hole. I'll take it out and spin it around here in a second and I just do the other side. That way both sides are clear burrs. and the turning of the male side of the part. Uh, I leave all of my dimensions heavy and then I will slowly draw them in to their final dimensions at the very end.
cycle part. I set up the boring bar so that I can do the internal turning and the facing for the female. Once again, I'm leaving everything slightly heavy and then doing final passes to clean it up two dimension. I pull the part out, uh, give it a quick inspection, and the last thing to do is to uh, split it in the bandsaw. Once it's split, I can clean up the, uh, the cut edges and we can give it a shot. As you can see, it worked out really well. If anything, we're just slightly under, which is what I wanted to be. Um, what's going to happen is on this part that I have to make, I have to put an adhesive, a self-adhesive cushion. And I don't want there to be an air pocket. I want, if anything, I want to be able to drop just a little bit of something into there. And when I lay it down, it'll glue down really nice and won't have any kind of pocket. Um, I've already pre-drilled a hole and deburred it. And we just got our 5 16th bolt. The washers are going to act like a bearing for us. And when you do this, you sh it's better to use a fine thread bolt because a fine thread can take more torque than a uh, coarse thread bolt. Just like that, we have our dimple pocket. Now it's ready to... Uh, take the next drill bit that's proper for the thread cert and put that hole to size, deburr it, and we can set our thread cert and be good to go. And that's how we made our dimple dies for thread certs.